What's going on, folks? Thanks for hitting that download button and checking out a brand new episode of Toys and Tech of the Trade, your one-stop shop for toys, tech, and talk with some assembly required. I'm your host, Rich, and if this is your first time checking out an episode, first of all, welcome. Second, a bit about what we do here. Toys and Tech of the Trade is an interview series where we sit down with content creators, entrepreneurs, and just awesome folks that are on our radar and discuss the gadgets, the gear, and the tech that they use to run their business, create their content, and more importantly, be more productive. Now, when it comes to toys, we kind of embrace it in a more broad sense. It's not just the usual action figures or Funko Pops or the usual stuff that you think of when you hear the word toys, but everyone's definition of toys is different. So it can be the person who likes to collect guitar picks or handguns or jet skis. Everyone's definition of toys is different, and we embrace that general sense of it here on this podcast for a couple of reasons. First, it allows us to connect with our guests on a more personal level. Second, it helps break up some of that business talk. And again, just give us a more personal conversation and not just uh, an interrogation about the stuff that people use and the services and, and gadgets that they need to run their business. So with that little brief intro out of the way, let's get into some housekeeping and turn it over to this week's guest. So first and foremost, um, it's, it's, uh, it's been a crazy week here uh, for me, and um, I'm not going to go too deep into it because I don't want to drag it out, but um, you know, I've been kind of avoiding the, uh, the specter of COVID in my home, and unfortunately, it uh, made its way into my home through, unfortunately, no fault of anyone's except uh, it ended up of getting my grandmother, who uh, she's going to be uh, 80 this year. And she has a home health aide. Uh, the aide did a little bit of traveling and uh, didn't get herself checked out. And needless to say, uh, my grandmother, she had a fall uh, oh, last weekend and um, had her sent her in for a checkup, etc. Ended up being that her blood pressure was dangerously low. Uh, sent her to the ER. She uh, got admitted, of course. And in the midst of all the testing, sure enough. It was COVID. Now, um, crazy thing was that, you know, my grandmother, obviously, um, she had got herself vaccinated because she was older. She had some uh, pre-existing health conditions. But um, crazy thing was that in the time that she had suffered her fall, you know, we had called the paramedics to come check her out uh, at the recommendation of the home health aids agency. And the paramedics, they checked her. She didn't have a fever. She didn't have a cough. None of the usual uh, quote unquote COVID symptoms. The only thing she had was some bathroom issues, which were a uh, big part of what was causing all of the other issues she was having because obviously dehydration, losing electrolytes, et cetera, plus obviously uh, COVID manifesting in a different way. But the crazy part was obviously we got her uh, hospitalized and um, we got notified of her diagnosis that Thursday, uh, excuse me, that Friday. So of course, my two sisters, uh, my oldest, uh, she, you know, she has autism. So we uh, said, you know, she's my grandmother's closest point of contact besides myself. So let's just test ourselves. So I uh, tested my wife, uh, my daughter, my younger sister, and of course, my older sister. And of course, my older sister was positive as well. So um, it was pretty crazy, uh, obviously because she was a point of contact for all of us. So uh, we had to self-isolate. It was um, particularly grueling for me, because uh, obviously I was uh, helping out my grandmother, helping my sister as I'm her primary caregiver, and um, trying to make sure that my three-year-old daughter did not get sick. And um, the thing about it was, obviously I'm trying to avoid uh, contact with everybody, social distancing, all the crazy stuff, walking around the house with an N95 mask. I was sleeping on my couch. Uh, it definitely sucked. And um, the thing about it is I'm not going to sit here and preach any sort of ideologies because obviously countless media outlets, government agencies, and everyone else has been telling you what you should or shouldn't do. Uh, but I will say this, and this is the only thing I will say on the matter, is do what you can to keep those closest to you safe and you know just take take that into account when um you know when you're dealing with whatever you're dealing with you know if you have if you're responsible for other people 
And it's your responsibility to keep them safe. Do what you can to keep them safe. And um, that's 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 the long and short of it. You know, I tried my hardest to keep, uh, you know, had uh, air purification systems in my house, making sure we were masked up when we got out. And through no fault of anyone's, of course, the um, you know, it still got in my house anyway. Uh, the scariest part of all this, and I'll leave it at that, is that, you know, my, my grandmother tested positive. She told her home health aide and she goes, listen, you know, I tested positive and, um, you should go get yourself checked out obviously, cause you're a close point of contact. And the aide said, and I quote, no, I feel fine. That's what the aide said. And I found that to be a little troubling. So a few days passed and my grandmother said, Hey, you know, um, you know, she, she asked my grandmother, Hey, when, when can I come back to work? Are you home? My grandmother said, no, not yet. And, um, in the midst of the conversation, my grandmother said, Hey, did you go get yourself checked out? You know, I was pretty messed up from this stuff. So you should get yourself checked out. You have kids at home and same thing. No, I don't want to, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, obviously, like I said, anything could happen. It could have gotten anywhere, but you know, the, the sheer refusal from the aide definitely raised a red flag for me personally. Uh, most importantly, because obviously when you're in the healthcare industry, especially here in New York city, uh, you're supposed to be, you know, vaccinated. You're supposed to quarantine if you've been traveling, you know, all, all the good stuff. And, um, this person just opted to not do that or opted to just hide if they had anything going on, because if you're asymptomatic, obviously you can still transmit. So, um, yeah, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty crazy. And, um, you know, knock on wood, my grandmother, she is home now on the mend. Uh, her and my sister are still isolating, uh, for another few days until obviously, uh, we get the all clear, but it's, uh, it's been crazy, man. It's, uh, it's been, a an interesting couple of days and it's, uh, put a damper on a lot of, of projects I was working on. Because obviously, you know, I'm trying to self isolate. I was self isolating to make sure, you know, just in case I didn't uh, happen to give the gift that keeps on giving. But uh, that's the short story of what's been going on, you know, personally. But all that aside, I'm grateful that everyone's on the mend, and uh, you know, we uh, we persevered and we are moving on. Anyway, this week's guest is uh, uh, very special. Uh, huge thanks to uh travis from pod decks i've talked about pod decks before uh great uh you know uh tangible product but also digital product that allows you to really deliver the best interviews possible uh if you're someone who struggles with coming up with engaging questions for your guests uh definitely pick up a deck from pod decks you can get uh plenty of different themed card decks and they have loads of questions that can really help uh, really step up your interview game. Um, as someone who's been interviewing people for, I want to say, 10 plus years now, you think you've got it figured out and you've got like some default questions you kind of fall back on, etc. But the thing about it is that we can always use a little bit more help and we can definitely level up our presentations. And Travis and the pod decks brand definitely do that. Like I said, they offer uh, tangible decks of cards based on different themes that you can pick up. Plus they also have an app for iOS and Android. If you prefer to just have it on your mobile device and man, it is, it is tremendous. I ended up picking up the deck uh, virtually, like I said, via iOS because I can pull up my custom card deck through my iPad or on my phone if I'm doing an interview someplace and I want to just add a couple of different questions because again you can prep as much as possible but things fall through the cracks man but Travis from Poddex um just a, a great asset to the podcasting community really out there uh doing as much as he can to make the space better for everyone and as a result of his community I ended up connecting with uh this week's guest coach Danny Del Vecchio and man we had an amazing conversation but you know what I don't need to sell you on it I'm just going to turn it over to coach Danny and let him tell you about the toys and tech of his trade enjoy 
All right, my guest for this week's episode is Coach Danny Delvecchio. Danny is a social sales coach. His goal to help small business owners sell on social, and he not only allows owners to sell on social and helps them do it uh, expediently and without all of the guru nonsense that so many people have to deal with, but more importantly, he does it in a friendly, approachable, and more importantly, easy to digest way. We're going to sit down with him and learn about the toys and tech of his trade. Coach Danny, what's going on? Hey, Rich. Thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. I am very excited to sit down with you. Uh, we were connected through uh, a, a mutual person we both know, which is Travis Brown. Shout out to him and, and Poddex. And, you know, we're, we're both New Yorkers, both, you know, Queens, Long Island uh, natives. So there was a, a natural connection there. And I said, you know, watching your your journey unfold and what you've been doing on Instagram and how you've been harnessing the power of social engagement to grow your business has just been incredibly inspiring. I wanted to share it with our audience. Hopefully they can take some gems from our conversation and apply it to their business and their social footprint. So before we get into some of the more actionable stuff, I kind of want to get into your origin story first and talk about how you got started and what led you down the path to become a social sales coach. <laughs> Okay. Um, I guess we'll go like way back to the beginning. Like I got into sales pretty young, right? Um, I was a sales rep at a Radio Shack store while I was going to uh, Nassau Community College, local local to Long Island. Uh, uh, so the New Yorkers will know that one. But anyway, I was going to Nassau Community College and I was working at Radio Shack. And uh, basically somebody at uh, Radio Shack said, hey, you know, you're doing really well. Would you like to become a store manager? And I said, yeah, sure, I'll become a store manager. Uh, little did I know they gave me the worst piece of sh store in uh, all of Long Island. Uh, and I, I was working like crazy hours. I had the worst staff. And uh, it, was, it was just a, a disaster. Um, but ultimately, I, I, I took the experience that I had gotten. I, I went over to AT&T and I uh, was working as, an AT as a sales rep at AT&T in Green Acres Mall other Long Island, Queens, shout out there. Um, and uh, then I, I ran a store in Queens and Fresh Meadows for AT&T. And then I went from there, I went to AT&T B2B sales. And the next step, I did four years in AT&T B2B sales. And it, it, it was uh, a great time, sold a lot of phones, sold all, all types of technology, the whole gamut of AT&T's product portfolio. So um, you know, connectivity, internet services, voice over IP, cloud-based services, advanced applications. So I did that for, like I said, four years. And then I had the opportunity to join a company called Spring Communications, right? And Spring Communications was basically a authorized retailer for AT&T, their largest one. They operated like 1,400 stores across the country. And when I signed on with them, they were starting a brand new business to business team. And I hopped on to that business to business team as one of the original people. Um, we had eight, we had an eight person team within three months. We did so well that they decided that we were going to grow this thing to 150 people. So I'm sorry, we were going to grow it to 50. <laughs> um, I got promoted. I became a sales manager and then I got promoted again, became a sales director. And in three years, we took this eight person little division and turned it into 150 people. And I ran a sales team that spanned the entire East Coast from New England down to Florida. Um, I had about seven sales managers on my team, 50 sales reps, and everything was gravy. I had a great boss. I was loving life. Uh, I was doing a lot more travel than I, than I wanted. If there was any drawbacks to it, that was probably the biggest thing was a, a lot of travel, um, especially considering that I have young kids. It was a little bit tough, but like I said, everything was great. And then all of a sudden the company got acquired, <sighs> didn't really work out with the new company that came in and acquired us. Um, and I ended up going back into an individual contributor sales role after years of being in sales leadership. And when I got back into the individual contributor role, the sales game had changed. You know, it was like, everybody's like LinkedIn, 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 like code calling is dead. Email marketing is dead all these things. Right. Jeez. So basically I 
dedicated myself to learning a lot of the newer sales tech techniques and perfecting some of these newer sales techniques. So incorporating social media and incorporating video into selling and building a personal brand and using your personal brand to grow your network and to make sales. So, you know, for th the last three years, I've been doing that and, you know, working in the, the sales individual contributor role that I'm doing right now. And, but what I missed from my time in leadership is working individually and coaching people. So that led me to say, hey, you know what? Like in addition to my sales job that I'm doing right now, you know, I've got all this knowledge in, you know, all these modern sales techniques. Let me go over, let me start a business. Let me help people who are either struggling to make sales online or people who just don't know how, how to, they're, they're seasoned salespeople, but they have no idea how to sell online, right? right. So those are my two um, sort of target audiences. And uh, those are the people that I'm helping right now with my, with my coaching business. So I want to unpack that a little further. You, yeah, absolutely. you, you are, you took essentially the entire skill set that you built in the retail and B2B space and repurposed it into one-to-one -one coaching. Now, I'm sure it, along the way there were challenges, especially when, and I, and I know this just from being in, a, in different industries over the years, salespeople sometimes are very, very regimented and they refuse to move outside of the comfort zone of what's got them there first 50k first 100k because they figured if it's not broke don't you know don't fix it but to that end what kind of challenges have you ran into using a more and i use this th this term a more new media approach versus the conventional style that so many salespeople rely on exactly what you were saying the cold calling all of that stuff how what challenges have you run into kind of pitching this new way of thinking so for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm pitching it to people that know that they, they know that they need it, right? And they know the impact that social media has, right? So like, and the statistic that, that really hits me is that every day there are 200 million people that hit at least one business profile on Instagram. That is a, that is a crazy number, right? So like you, and that's on Instagram alone. That doesn't right. count LinkedIn. That doesn't count Facebook. That doesn't count YouTube, right? There's all these uh, ways, right? And then you look at some, and then, and then just also just being able to tell a story, right? So here's a great story. And here's an example. I am looking for a real estate agent in South Carolina because I'm thinking about moving my family down to South Carolina, right? Okay. So what do I do? I look up some of the areas in South Carolina that I'm interested in. And I find real estate agents on YouTube who make these videos about life in Greenville, South Carolina, for example, right? right. And there's maybe four or five different agents that do this on YouTube. And I look at, uh, you know, I, I start watching some of the videos and I'm like, cool, this is a guy that I think I would hang out with. And right off the bat, I make a phone call. He picks up the phone, right? So now through the power of online marketing and online promoting himself, he got a client from New York who plans on moving down to South Carolina. And if I buy a home in Greenville, South Carolina, I'm going to buy the home from this guy. Right. Because he put himself out there on these social channels. That simple. Right. So like when you can break it down and tell a story like that, you know, maybe it gets people to think, okay, I got to step outside the box. I got to step outside of my comfort zone. And put myself out there and try some of these new modern sales techniques, which work. You know, it's interesting because you're one of the few people, I think it's what resonated with me the most, that you you shift your messaging, not so much to a sales demographic, but to a demographic that is in line with you personally. Like, I'll use an example. Like yesterday, you did a post uh, talking about yourself and what you are into. And you're like, listen, I like 90s and 2000s hip hop. I wear a, a backwards fitted hat. You know, I like my hoodies. I like my, my pop culture references. I like all of my New York references. And the thing about it that jumped out for me 
is that you are still promoting and working on your craft and selling, but you are doing it in a human way and not so much, hey, you know, here's my PowerPoint that I just converted to an Instagram post and I'm going to wear a shirt and tie and and try and frame it in, in, in a in a salesy sort of way, because people, especially with social media now, they they click that right off so fast. You know, it, it depends, right? Because like, I mean, there's there's a guy who I, I love on social media. I think he does an amazing job. His name is, um, I think his account is at the Dubai plug on Instagram. And his name is Alessandro. And I love Alessandro stuff. But every time, I mean, he's in a three-piece suit. The guy looks sharp as hell, but that's him, man. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's his personality. That's him. That's what he does, right? Like, I, there's going to be people right off the bat who look at me and don't take me seriously. Right. Because they're like, I'm not going to do business. I'm not going to, like, learn sales from this guy with the backwards hat and the hoodie that doesn't look super polished and professional. And that's okay. Like, right. that person's not for me. Bingo. You know what I mean? That's that's not my tribe. And like once you realize that not every person is going to resonate with you, and like once you realize that that's okay, you got to leg up on everybody else and you can lean into being yourself and being who you are. And when you are, when you do come off as this authentic, genuine person that shares things that they are, that are part of their life that are, that are, that they're passionate about. Um, you are that much more attractive to, you know, potential customers that, that are into those same things with you. And, and they may not even be into the same things. People are just attracted by passion in mm -hmm. general. Right. So like they may not be into nineties hip hop, but they see that every story that I put up has like a nineties hip hop theme in the background. Every reel that I put up has a nineties hip hop song in, in the background. And they, they can tell that that's something that I'm passionate about. And it helps connect them, helps them connect to me because they know that I'm passionate. Right. And, and there's a great story. There's, and um, there's a book about this. And I think it's, I think it's called Fanocracy, right? And basically, there's, it's the story of the, the skateboarding dentist. So the guy, the guy is in the Bay Area. And he, there's like, I don't know, thousands and thousands of dentists in the Bay Area. Right. And this guy says to a mentor, he goes, how do I, how do I stand out? How do I set myself apart from the other thousands of dentists out there? And the mentor's like, well, what's something that you love? And he's like, well, I love skateboarding. So he goes all in, he takes, he puts skateboarding pictures all over the walls, right? He's got skateboards even hanging on the walls. And he goes that as far as when he goes from exam room to exam room, he, he, he skateboards between the rooms, <laughs> That's right? Cool. And I forget the I forget the amount of business that he he um he did. It's either like he five x his business or ten x his business in one year in the first year because now he wasn't just one of the ten thousand dentists in the Bay Area. He became the skateboarding dentist, and every kid came home and told their parents. They were told, told their friends, "I got the skateboarding dentist," and all those kids came home and told their parents, "Hey, I want to go to the skateboarding dentist." And all these celebrities and everything now go to the skateboarding dentist. I mean, that's such a great way to frame it. And I'll be honest, I think especially now as I'm getting older, one of the, one of the funny things and and it ties to this is that whenever I try to find like let's say a chiropractor or a doctor or anything, I try and find either those professionals that were either strength athletes, worked with strength athletes or cater to strength athletes because when when I was younger and I was heavy into weightlifting I remember going to see a doctor and you know I stood on the scale doing my physical and he's like you know you shouldn't really lift all these heavy weights blah 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 this and and I'm like you know I said to myself and then I couldn't help it I said it to him I'm like dude did like a big dude like kick sand in your face like in the back of a comic book and he's like why why would you say that and I'm like because you kind of have like a bias and you're projecting that bias into my 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 physical, like how I should like how healthy I should be based on your standards. And he's like, no, 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 I'm not doing that. And I said, listen, man, is my blood pressure good? Is my cholesterol good? He's like, yeah, everything's fine. And I said, all right, cool. Thanks. 
And that was the end of me going to that doctor. And I said, I need to find doctors and specialists and things that cater to strength athletes or to lacrosse players, college football players, like people that understand that if you walk in there and you're built a certain way, they know that there's a method to the madness of why you're built that way. And mm-hmm. they don't have a bias that's coming out of there. And I want to circle back to what you said before about, you know, that's not your tribe. And I think it's very important. And I want everybody listening to this conversation to really focus on that because one of the things I remember when I went, would go to networking events when I first started podcasting was, oh, you know, make sure you have a nice watch on. And I said to myself, who the hell is going to do business with me based on the watch that I'm wearing? And they'd be like, trust me, it's very important. And I said to myself, then those aren't people I want to do business with. Because if they're exactly. hung up on, you know, oh, you got this $5,000 watch on or you get out of this, you know, BMW, uh, you know, five series or whatever it is or M or M series. And all of a sudden, that's the barometer that they're gauging to do business with you. It's like, it, what if the car is leased? You know what I mean? What if what if the watch is fake? Like you're you're not you're not getting a genuine person at that point. You're getting a person who's putting on an a. Uh, a, a gimmick for appearance sake. Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, you know, this is like, and this is this is like rampant on Instagram. Yep. You know what I mean? Like all these gurus and like also all these people like telling you like high ticket, high ticket, high ticket, right? Like, you know what? Like, I sort of don't really want to be high ticket. Nope. Like, I'm not looking at high ticket. Like, I want to help people that are, you know, kind of scraping, yep. you know what I mean? And grinding, right. That like, you know, that need the help more than somebody that can afford, you know, a $10,000 a month coaching package. You know yep. what I mean? Like, I mean, sure. If, if the person has $10,000 to spend and they want to spend it with me, sure. Great. But like, I'm going to give the same effort to the person that's spending $500 a month with me. So like, you know, that, that's this, uh, there's this, uh, you know, again, like, and, and a lot of um, people and, and Travis is like, one of them is like, you know, be the anti guru kind of thing. Yep. Right. Because it's like I said, it's just, it's just not, it doesn't fit with, it doesn't fit with me. It doesn't fit with my style. It's, and like, and, and there's some people like that, that I jive with their content and things like that. Right. Like they're like, I mean, I, I get value from Grant Cardone. Yep. But will I ever be able to do Grant Cardone's style? No, it's just not me. Yep. It's not me. Like I don't care about Lamborghinis and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, like that's not what I'm looking for, man. I'm just looking to I'm looking to be a creator. I'm looking to work with creators, enjoy myself doing it, like, and make a make a living out of something that I actually enjoy living. Uh, I actually enjoy doing. Excuse me, and not, you know, like I'm not trying to be like this mega billionaire rich guy that drives a Lambo. That's just not me. Nope. I mean, listen, the, the, the funny thing about that is, you know, it, you bring up Grant Cardone and uh, occasionally I'll go down the TikTok rabbit hole and, you know, you start seeing a lot of business stuff and he'll pop up and he's talking to like Logan Paul about financial investments. And listen, man, this is what my bank account looks like and all this stuff. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. You know, and you can get people with that. But I also feel that you also put yourself in the upper stratosphere of unattainability. Because people are going to look at it and be like, well, damn, this guy's playing in this sandbox with multimillionaires. And here I am, you know, a hundred air or a thousand air playing, playing, you know, playing small ball. And the th- the thing about it is that you summed it up perfectly that people you want the people that are playing small ball because those are the people that really are invested in their craft because it brings them just f- not only financial fulfillment, but personal fulfillment. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. You know, like, like I said, I I attend these networking meetings and it's these young professionals that right now, like they have their own businesses, right? They, or, you know, or they, they have a, a, a position, some sort of position they're working towards becoming self-employed, right? Um, Or they already own their own businesses. And these guys are grinding and, but they, because they own their own business at such a young age, like a lot of them don't have mentors, right? They haven't had like, a, they haven't found a mentor yet. Right. 
And like, that's the kind of person that I'm looking for is like somebody who is young and hungry and, and the young it is, doesn't, it doesn't have to be young. It could right. be an older person that's hungry. They, they could be retired and want to grow an online business now too. Like just somebody who is hungry and is looking for a mentor, looking for somebody to, to help them, looking for somebody to looking to learn some of the modern ways that we can do things and be successful. And, you know, we'll, uh, that's, that's the person that jives with me. <laughs> uh, talk, talk us through a time when you've had to fire a client. Well, look, my business is brand new, so I haven't had to fire. I've only been in business for, for like three months, by the way. Really? So if, you, if, if you noticed, yeah. Shit, like, you could have fooled coach, me. <laughs> my coaching, my coaching business has only been open for three months. Right. Luckily, I have not had to fire a client yet. I've got a, I've got a couple of clients that I'm working with, and they are excellent. And really? I, um, I'm impressed. Would not plan on firing them anytime soon. <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. Um, what about during your time in B2B sales? Did you run into that? Like those difficult clients that were just, you just knew that they're like, this isn't a fit. It's not going to work. Let me just cut my losses. Yeah, sure. It's a, it's a little bit tough when you're with AT&T and everything is two year contracts. Though. Yep. I, I, yeah. I think that's a scary thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, ultimately when I first started in B2B, I would do everything I possibly could do to try to save a client that was look that was unhappy and wanted to go to another provider. Right. right? I would do everything I possibly could, even though like, even if I hadn't been the one to sell them. And sometimes I dealt with some shit. People yep. gave me some horrible, people treated me terribly, right? Um, to go through that process. And at some point, my mentor over there, she said to me, she goes, sometimes you just got to let them go. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, like, you know, once I, I realized that like, you know, hey, I've, I've done all I could at this point and this is the best that I, this is the best thing that I can do for you right now. Um, and if this is, if, if my best right now is not good enough, then, you know, in, enjoy, enjoy T-Mobile and enjoy Verizon, right? Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, I think I think it's it's weird that so many people they don't going back to what we were saying before, it's a paper chasing game. They're like, "Man, I can't lose this client." But you said something just now that just again, just resonated very well, and it's the fact that sometimes they if they're treating you terribly, they're treating you with a false sense of entitlement. It's like, "Why why am I going to cultivate a relationship that's one-sided?" Like if the person doesn't want to be here and I'm investing all this energy, I could be investing it into a person that genuinely wants to hear my voice on a call. Like, hey, just touching base versus uh, what do you want? You know? Yeah. And it's like I said, it's it's not about the money, right? So if 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 i if I feel like, you know, somebody is just going through the motions, like if I'm working with if I'm working one on one with somebody, or even if somebody's part of a group coaching or whatever that I'm gonna launch here soon. Like if I feel like they're, that they're just going through the motions and they're not getting anything out of it, uh, I'm going to sit down with them and tell them, Hey, this is, you know, it doesn't seem like this is the right fit for you. Makes and sense. I'm going to cut them off. Like, I'm not going to just let them continue to pay me and get nothing for it. Like, that's not what I want. Like I want, I want people to get results. So if you're working with me and you're not getting results, but you but you just continue to, you know, kind of half-ass it, I'm going to let you go. Tell me about your first deal when you started uh, selling on social media. How was, you know, what was, what was your feeling like that first client, you know, talk me through that day because everybody, it's like when you make your first hundred dollars, you know, everybody's like, oh my God, that day was this and this and this. Talk me through your first client on this particular venture. Oh, for, on the, uh, in the new business yes. or just on social media? Uh, no, in and, your, and your, on your new business. Oh man, it, it feels good. It feel you know, because here's what, here's what you do, right? Like I, you know, I had this account and I decided, okay, here's the direction that I'm going to go with it. And I'm going to go all in and I'm just going to build value. And for the last three months that I've had this account, that's really all I've done. I have gone, I have put out content on a daily basis to show that I know what I'm talking about. And 
just build the community and build the audience and ask I have asked for nothing in return. I have not I have not up until uh, maybe a couple weeks ago um or a week ago I have not tried to sell one thing on Instagram. Wow. Now, that being said, people have come to me and they have said, "Oh, you know what? I really like your videos. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you help other people?" Right. And that's how I've booked a couple of clients that way. Wow. They've come to me because they've seen my content. Now I'm, now I'm, I'm shifting, right? You know, I've, I've, I've got an audience. They're extremely engaged and I don't have a big following right now. I have about 1100 followers, right? So like my following is still relatively small, but my following is engaged. Yep. They are extremely engaged and I get amazing feedback from my community. So now I am starting to mix in some sales posts and some sales Language. into right. my content and mostly doing it on my Instagram stories, right? And just letting just letting people know out there like, hey, here are the clients. I'm working with clients right now. Here are the results that they're getting. And I'm here for you. And I'm running a couple of different programs right now. And one of them may be a fit for you, right? So I'm definitely taking this approach of just putting out consistent value on a daily basis, engaging, answering questions, jumping on lives, collaborating, and the business is going to come just naturally, organically through that. Well, you know, with that said, just to dig into the, into the meat a little further, let, let's, let's talk about a regular content day for you. So how do you how do you structure out your content for what, for that particular day? Do you, do you kind of keep a, a rolling list of things and then you kind of circle back? Do you give yourself voice memos? How do you structure it? Because every day there's a million variables that can change how you want to do the messaging for that day. Could be the mood. I remember you got sick recently that changed the way you approach it. You're like, listen, I can't get online. My voice is messed up, but I still got some bangers for you. So Talk me through that. Like how, how's that, uh, how's your content workflow? Yeah. So, um, and again, like my, right now, like that's something that I still could use to improve it is my, my content workflow. Right. But what I do have is I have my like ideas vault, nice. right? Like I have, you know, I get ideas and I can get inspired by anything, you know, like, and I love, and you know, you're a pop culture guy, right? So one of the things that I love to do is get inspired by like by pop culture or by something I see in the TV or or something that I or a song, right? That that resonates with me and then I'm like, "Oh cool, how do I make that into a piece of content?" Right. Right? So um example example content is like one of my favorite types and i just did one the other day like with cobra kai because i'm like obsessed with that tv show cobra kai because i don't know it's just like because of the nostalgia maybe like because i like karate kid in the 80s and 90s when i was growing up and like the fact that they came back and like you know do it in this like amazing like way uh you know (laughs) like johnny lawrence is like my favorite character on tv right now um so like i was like how can i make Cobra Kai work for sales? How can I make a post about that, you know, would be related to Cobra Kai and selling on social media? And I was like, boom, like how to strike first in sales. Yep. Let me, let me figure out how to work that post. And I just worked it out in my head and I was like, okay, cool. Um, so my content workflow really is now is like ideas, 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 ideas. And, and I just use Evernote. Um, speaking of, you know, my, the tech that I use, I use Evernote to jot down all my ideas. Okay. And then, and sometimes it's just a single line with an idea that's not developed yet. And then sometimes like I'll do an idea and start bullet pointing it and I bullet point it right there on Evernote. Right. Um, and then usually I don't create the content until sometimes the morning of sometimes the night before, mostly the night before. Um, and then the morning of sometimes, depending on what I had going on the night before or whatever. Um, so, and then I also have like a small vault of some posts that are basically created. All I got to do is spin them up and put them out there just in case I don't have the, uh, the time to 
or, you know, just in case something comes up and right. I have nothing. And you've, you've been, the, the best part about this is that everything you're doing is again, just very polished, very well done is, are these things that you've just picked up along the way and taught yourself? Or are these other things where, you know, like you said before, you found mentors, coaches that just helped you fine tune a lot of this messaging. So, um, as far as like the graphic design part of it, I did study graphic design for a very short period of time. And I've always been like pretty artistic. Um, and throughout the years that I was doing podcasting, you know, I would do episode covers and, and things like that. So that's where like I learned how to use Canva. Like I, I know how to use Photoshop. I don't use Photoshop too much anymore because I, I, um, I don't have uh, the, the software anymore. Um, so like really I, I just do everything, like all my graphics and everything are done through Canva. And I, 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 you have to pay for a pro subscription for anybody out there that's using Canva. Like if you're not, if you don't have a pro subscription, um, you're missing out on a lot and it's, it's relatively inexpensive. Um, <clears throat> so the graphics part, like I said, I, I kind of have some experience that I'm kind of artistic already. So <clears throat> that's, that helps. Um, and then I have also had a couple of really good mentors, right? So I, part of a, a master, I, I joined a, the, a mastermind group that Travis Brown ran and Travis Brown has become, uh, one of my, he's probably, he's my top mentor right now. That's, that's teaching me a lot about content and, uh, you know, how to create content and how to make it look good, you know, like, and, and I'll sit with Travis and like, you know, well, we'll I have one-on-one sessions with him and like, you know, he'll be like, all right, what do you want to, what do you want to do today? I was like, I want you to tell me why your videos look professional and mine look amateur so that I can fix that. Nice. Direct and then to the, point. the other thing is <laughs> like, I also invested in an Instagram growth program and um led by this amazing instagram growth guy dan thomas he's he's phenomenal he's out he's out of the uk and he um it he's the one that really you know pushed me into like teaching me how to do those hooks teaching me how to write the copy a little bit more efficiently and a little bit more effective with the copy. And well, Travis has helped with the copy too. And like helping to kind of tie into the emotional thing and then really looking at other people's content too. Like there's, there's a few people out there that I just get inspired by their content. Like Val Kiz is another one. Um, like I look at her stuff and you know, that, that stuff, you know, she inspires me. Um, you know, she, her, her entire, voice or in her entire structure is all around uh, her niche, I guess you would say is around storytelling. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been really trying to obviously incorporate storytelling as a big part of what I do as well. So, um, you know, taking inspiration from others, working with mentors, um, you know, having some, you know, abilities, some uh, natural abilities when it comes to art, art or being artistic and creative. Um, I think it's a combination of all those. Yeah, I think I think that uh, what what you were what you were breaking down with regards to your mentors and how they were helping you fine tune your process is very very important because I think not enough people make that investment either because they're scared that they're gonna you know piss away the money or they're not gonna get the same ROI that they would get if they were doing it themselves. And whenever people say that, I always say to them, but What's your ROI now doing it half-assed versus your ROI doing it at a hundred percent? Because at, right now, if you're doing it all yourself and it's and it's decent and it costs you, I don't know, 150 bucks, but you can 10x that work. Why wouldn't you spend the 150 bucks if the results are going to be 10x? I mean, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it it's scary that some people, you, you know, they'll they'll talk to me about podcasting and i want to kind of get into that with you also and they'll say oh you know um i, I you know i spent 500 dollars on this mixer i said okay cool you know awesome you spent 500 bucks on this mixer and 100 bucks on this microphone but you know i want to use this free software to edit my shows and i said okay that's fine but why don't you pay for the software learn how to edit the software and then just use a decent mic and a decent mixer because if you get tired of it now you're stuck with you know, $600 in equipment 
that you can do nothing with. The software you can do for voiceovers, you can turn that into a side hustle, you can do more things. The mixer and the microphone, while they're nice, they're not necessary. Yeah, and that's just a matter of priorities, right? Like they right. prioritize the equipment over the software. And most of the time they prioritize the equipment over the software because they just don't know better. Right. Did you run into right? that right. over your course of, of your journey? Like like prioritizing certain things more than others and then kind of having to pull back? Oh, 100. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Um, like, I mean, obviously, I've done it. I've done it myself, prioritizing one thing over another, right? Um, and you know, even some of the client, like the clients that I'm working with right now, that that's a that's I think that's a problem for almost everybody, right? Yep. Is like trying to figure out like what the top priority things are, right? So, um, you know, that's something that I deal with uh, deal with personally as well as I deal with with my clients is. Just trying to figure out how to prioritize things, and and sometimes like it's just going to somebody that's an expert and asking. And this is the other thing that I would say too, right? Is like before you jump in and buy the mixer, and before you jump in and buy the, the microphone, why did they call you first? Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like reach out to you first and say, hey, hey, Rich, like I'm you know I'm starting a podcast, and you know these are the things that I have to spend money on. What is the what what's better for me? What's what, where, where is, where is the better use of my money going? Right. Like, let me come to the expert and ask him as opposed to like, just trying to figure it out on my own. So like, you know, when, if I have some kind of situation like that, like the first thing that I'll do is like, let's go to Travis, yep. <laughs> you know, exactly. it's like, so, you know, what should I prioritize this or this and why? And like, sometimes I'll listen to him and sometimes I won't. Right. Like, right. cause it's, obviously it's my choice, but, um, you know, but I respect his advice because he's been there he's ahead of me he has the experience right now but a lot of people are just afraid to ask no and that's that that you led me to the next part of it a lot of times people are afraid to ask but they're not afraid to throw money at the problem and it's funny because you were you were talking about that you reached out to travis and you said how can i make my videos look better you could have easily said well let me just get a better phone or let me just get a better camera but Little might you have known that it might just be the setting on your thousand dollar phone <laughs> that you might need to adjust or, hey, spend twenty five dollars on a lighting kit or film by a window again, free free ninety nine to film by a window to make your videos look 10, 20 times better. But, you know, a thousand dollar, a two thousand dollar phone is going to fix it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you, I, I don't like I like tech, man, I, and, but I, I used to like it a lot more. You right. know, like I used to like, I had to have the best phone and I had to have the newest computer and like all these things. Right. Like, and I'm just like, so not like that anymore. And, you know, I, Travis said, Hey, you know, like if you get a better camera, like you're going to get better video. Sure. Then rather, because right now I do every single one of my videos on my phone. Yep. And he's like, you get better software. You're going to like, cause I shoot, I use InShot to do all my videos. Like I use InShot to do like all the editing for my videos. It's like, you know, if I get a computer and with final cut pro or something like that, like it's going to, they're going to come out better. But right now I don't, I don't have the budget for that. Yep. And I'm still able to put out quality videos using InShot, using my cell phone, using my, I have a, a cheapo ring light that I use for lighting. Um, I mean, you're looking at, I've been podcasting for years. Like, you're looking at the microphone. I think this is maybe like a $60 microphone. Um, I do have a mixer um, that I bought years and years ago. And right. I think I spent like a hundred dollars on a mixer, right? Like I don't have any fancy equipment at all because the fancy equipment doesn't matter. What matters is the quality of the content and what not only the quality of the content, but just that you do it. Yep. <laughs> because, yep, because what's, what's going to happen <laughs> is, and is a lot of people do is like, the, they don't have the microphone, you know, they don't have the, the fancy shore microphone or they don't have the, 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 whatever that thing is called the task cam mixer and all these things. Right. And so, you know what they do? They don't do anything. They yep. don't put in any content. It's like, no, the guy that's doing it on his cell phone with no microphone um, is doing better than you because he's just doing it. Yep. And that's, and that's the thing. And I, and I wanted to kind of lean into that a little further about sometimes, sometimes you got to be comfortable failing because that's where the lessons come in i think too many people get so tied up in wanting to hit a home run that they forget that home runs win ball games but base hits do too 
Yeah. That's, and that, there's your, you know, there's your example content, right? And I did a whole post on that too. It's like, if you get up and swing for the fences every time, you're going to strike out more often. Yep. Right. So <laughs> like for me, it's just, I don't like, I, I, I try like at some point, do I want to invest in a nice camera? Yes, I do. I want to get, I want to get an XLR camera and I want to get a better space to do videos and get some proper lighting. And at some point, I am going to do that. But right now I do the best I can with what I have. And, you know, these are, I mean, I pay, I pay like $20 or something for the year or, or $20 one time for InShot and it works great. And my videos look great. And people are constantly telling me, you know, yeah, man, your videos are awesome. I love your, I love your reels. So I'm doing it with what I have. Yep. And that's, I think that that's something that I really wanted to drive home in this conversation is the fact that you got to take what you have and more importantly, create, 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 create. And little by little, which is something I've watched over the course of the time following you, you kind of just, you, you find your muse, your ideal customer. And that kind of dictates how you're going to deliver your final product because you know, like, hey, these messages, the market is the market. It's going to tell you like, hey, this post wasn't as re- didn't resonate as much as this reel. Or maybe this Instagram story had better engagement than this post. Maybe I got to do more stories. I'm sure you've run into that a lot, right? Over yeah, this journey. Yeah, I, I can give you an example right now. So um, uh, the first product that I released for 2022, because I'm like, you know, I was like, I'm into 2022. I just hit my thousand followers. I'm going to start, you know, talking about products and things like that, right? So the first um, product that I released was a live workshop. And I, I, I it was not the right thing. I, it was, I, I, and I kind of felt that it wasn't the right thing, but I went through with it anyway. Right. Because it was not the right thing with my, for my audience. Basically the workshop that I released was, um, this is Insta, this is the ultimate beginner's, uh, guide to selling on Instagram. Okay. But you know what? Like the people that are in my following, they've all been on Instagram for a while and they don't consider themselves beginners. So it wasn't the right product and it and it certainly wasn't the right positioning. Right. So uh, did I sell it to some people? Yeah, absolutely. I still have some people that are going to join that, that have joined the live workshop and are paying for it. I'm going to run it for as many. If, if there was one person that signed up, I was still going to run it for them. Right. Right. Now, had I done what my people are looking for, I did a post about how to sell in the DMs where I took a real shitty DM that I received and I showed people how to take a really shitty DM and rewrite it and make it awesome. Right. And that was my, maybe my highest performing post of all time. And it not only highest performing, but like people like, this is awesome. And people are messaging me about it and everything like that. So then I go on my story and I say, Hey, if I did a course on, if I did a live uh, webinar on how to sell in the DMS or how to write awesome sales DMS, would you join? And like, I never got so many (laughs) yes responses on a poll before. Right. There you go. So like, I picked the wrong thing, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I, I picked the one thing because I'm like, oh, you know what? Like, let's start with the beginner thing and then let's go to the next thing and let's go. But that's not what my audience wanted. What my audience wanted is they want to learn how to sell in DMs. So the next thing for me is let's do this live workshop on how to sell in DMs and go from there. What other products do you have on deck for, for this year that you're working on? Yeah. So um, there's one that I just launched and it's and this is free. This is free for anybody that wants to join. It is a networking group for creators. So basically what I have found is that the, uh, the I have this amazing community on Instagram that I'm constantly interacting and communicating with, but I very rarely get to sit across from them face to face and have a conversation, right? Um, so I wanted to kind of, you know, have this platform where, you know, I can actually interact on a little bit more of a personal intimate level right. with some of the people that you know are in my Instagram community on a weekly basis. So and then also give them the opportunity to interact with each other and give them the ability to talk about their services, right? A lot of times people are not very comfortable like talking about the services. Like a networking group is a place where you can hone in your pitch like learn how to talk about your services. Right. Um, and then also get insights and share ideas and, 
and share struggles and maybe get some advice on, on how to fix them from other creators in the same boat as you are, right? So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm doing this now. I'm, I'm doing this networking group. And it's it, like I said, it's free to join. It's going to be twice a week. Um, I, it's going to be one day a week. Wednesdays, it's going to be every day, every Wednesday. And I'm going to do two time slots, one in the, one in the um, early morning and one in the evening, because I got this audience that spans the whole globe, right? Right. So I got to try to um, make time work for everybody. So I, I, I'm going to do two options. Um, and I just launched it this morning was the official launch and i think i've got about 25 people in the group already and how we're and wh- how what platform are you running it through instagram or facebook or so, slack um, or discord so it's going to be a zoom it's going to be a zoom group right so the um i mean the, the the meetings are going to take place on zoom and i'm running it through my website got it yeah awesome yep and so you can go to my like i said it's just um I, I just have a, I have a link. It's like uh, coachdannyd.com slash networking group. And you can uh, sign up there basically. Nice. Yeah. All right. I definitely am going to make sure to link that in the uh, notes for this episode, because I'm sure there are plenty of content creators that are going to definitely want to connect with you. And who knows, may, may want to pick up with you and pick your brain or even hire you to help them unleash their, uh, their strongest creative selves on, on Instagram. Yeah, love it, love it. And then the other thing, and then the big, the big one that I am most excited about is a mastermind. Nice. So I want to do a mastermind group for again coaches, creators, entrepreneurs, and but focus on the business of creating. Okay. And the the structure that uh, I'm looking to do in the mastermind is to basically run two workshop uh, a weekly. It'll be a weekly meeting. It'll be a monthly membership um, with a weekly meeting. The weekly meeting will be a, um, it'll one, one week will be a training that I'll, I'll run myself. Um, one week will be a trainer from a guest. I'll bring somebody in an expert in podcasting or an expert in LinkedIn or whatever it is, right? And and have them come in, present, do a QA. Um, one week out of the month will be an open QA session. Anybody can come in, ask any any type of questions that they want. And then the last week will be hot seats. So people can volunteer um, for a hot seat session where they will basically get up there and talk about what it is that they have going on and w- what they need help with. And I'll do a little bit of coaching and everybody else in the group can kind of jump in and, and help coach those people that are, you know, that have volunteered um, to jump into that hot seat. So that's going to be the structure for the mastermind. And, you know, obviously, you know, people will kind of, you know, for the people that are in the networking group and want to take it that next level and learn a little bit more. Those are the people that will obviously be, uh, you know, jump into the mastermind group. Awesome. Well, speaking speaking of hot seat, that's a great segue into into our next segment, the hot seat. Uh, just a series of rapid fire questions, just uh, covering a uh, bunch of different things, business and and personal, just to help uh, people connect with you a little bit more. So, obviously, you were telling sure. us about InShot and Instagram. Uh, what are in addition to those apps? What are three mobile apps you can't live without? Canva, Evernote, and let's see, InShot, Canva, Evernote and instagram obviously and te- just text messaging oh okay, yeah can, messaging is clutch yeah um besides obviously your phone what's a favorite piece of tech besides your phone oh god it used to be the ipad um i used to use my ipad all the time and i basically never use it anymore my son uses it more than really? i do um yeah my son's kind of taken over it um the little one even calls it Luki's iPad. Oh, that's my <laughs> iPad. Um, and it's funny because the iPad has a great, um, if you ever want to uh, mess with video editing on the iPad, uh, LumaFusion. Really oh, good really? on the iPad. Really good on the iPad. Nice. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, I guess it would just be my laptop, which is literally like a, a very basic HP laptop, but I use it all, all the time because that's what I use for my content. So I would say my phone number one, laptop two. Uh, what's the last book you read? Um, oh, uh, one page marketing plan. Alan oh, okay. Dibb. 
It's funny. You're really the good. second person that has mentioned that book this month. So that's pretty. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, it's a good one. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Um, what's something you purchased recently that's less than $100 that made your life easier or more enjoyable? Uh, it's less than $100. Oh, um, I bought a Bluetooth um, shutter like thing to for my camera. Oh, those are so great and so underrated. Camera. It's like, I mean, I think I spent like 10 bucks on it and it's, 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 it's made my life so much easier. Nice. Um, what's the last TV show you watched? Cobra Kai. Nice. <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I initially tried to watch it and I was just like, ah, this is such a gimmicky nostalgia play. And, um, I kind of went back to it and approached it with a more nuanced approach. And I realized I'm like, man, they've really gone to such great lengths like not only reintroducing fan favorite characters but more importantly fleshing them out and making them super vulnerable like i i've talked to a few people that they were like man you know you you almost hate daniel larusso by the by the end of you know like that first season because you realize that johnny isn't that bad of a guy <laughs> right he just he just has he just has flaws you know and i think that that was the the interesting dynamic because when you looked at Daniel LaRusso, he was bullied, he overcame adversity, and he was the hero at the end of the movies. But it's like it, he kind of right. got a little gassed on himself, and he didn't realize that all the people along the way that helped him get there are flawed people that he should be helping. And I thought that was right. actually a really great turning point as the series progressed. And I like the fact that, like, you know, you brought back John Kreese, you brought back Terry Silver, like, like really just digging into so many facets of that history was just incredibly well done. Yeah. They, they like for like, you know, with re any type of like reboots and remakes and stuff like that, like they can, they can, they can go real bad. Mm -hmm. And I just think that this is like, really, they, this is like, to me, it's almost the standard for a reboot. Makes sense to me. And I, and I, and I, mm -hmm. I couldn't agree more only because, you you want to evolve those characters but more importantly you want to make them still relatable to to the people that really connected with them in the old days so right. i think they they did a really good job with that um you know obviously we talk tech you know we got to talk a little toys uh what was a toy or collectible you had from your childhood that you loved <sighs> um legos man legos 100% um and you know what's amazing my parents saved all my, all wow. my toys, almost every toy, almost every toy. So my son, who's five, he's got my Lego castle. Wow. He's got my, with all the tiny little Lego knights, <laughs> right? That's awesome. Um, from like, from the late eighties, probably. And he has all my He-Man action figures. And he plays with my He-Man action figures from the eighties that he breaks them. But he plays with them. You'll you'll then you'll appreciate my uh my daughter got into He Man. Uh we watched the Netflix one, she's three. And for Christmas, she nice. got He Man, Skeletor, and Battle Cat, because they reissued them as uh Amazing. part of the Origins line. So here you have a three year old with Skeletor sitting in Elsa's castle, holding holding oh Elsa. God, that's so funny. My son likes Elsa too. He loves Elsa. <laughs> so so it's 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 hilarious that 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 we that we uh have that in common you know my my kid is like skeletor is not a bad guy and i'm like boy oh boy do you have a lot to learn but it's just it's just amazing <laughs> like to see that unfold um shifting gears a little bit what's a non-negotiable for you when it comes to your business uh non-negotiable just uh, uh, be you be, it's it's non-negotiable you got to be yourself what's what's something that you've changed your mind on in the last 12 months relating to your business Oh. <laughs> what haven't I changed my mind on? Um, I I changed my mind from going like I wanted to create a business that was I, I wanted to create a podcast and turn my podcast um, into and make my podcast a side hustle, right? And use it as side income. And I've completely flip flopped where I have started a business, a coaching business. I want to have a podcast to complement the coaching business. And I want it to be full time. So very, very good. Too many people come into this space 
exactly like that. Just searching for the searching for the cash first. And it's like, listen, get the messaging right and then add the podcast. And it's like it's like seasoning, you know, add add that little bit of spice after the fact. And 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 your approach is is spot on going that route, because by the time you build your tribe and your audience, when you launch that podcast, they will follow you right there. Outstanding. That's the plan. Has the pandemic made you more or less productive? Way more. Way more, huh? Yep. That's outstanding. I Well, first off, it got healthy. Like when the pandemic hit, I was like, my approach was this. Wow, there's a really good chance that I'm going to get COVID. I better get healthy. <laughs> so I lost 50 pounds. Nice. Started getting up, getting up earlier, working out, um, you know, just changed uh, my lifestyle and my health because of the pandemic. Now I'm slacking a little bit right now and I got to get back to it. So I got to hold myself accountable to get back to it. That that's something that's so crucial because, you know, you can throw anything and everything regardless of any of your ideology, but if your health is shit, it's shit. <laughs> so, so you, you know, the fact that you said, Hey, if I get sick, I want to at least be armed with the fact that I'm in, in good health and, and, and good shape. So that I can be more effective battling it if I get sick. Too many people, they're just like, hey, you know, I'll just do this or I'll throw this at it or whatever. You know, it, it's funny because a, a lot of people, they'll reference like Joe Rogan or they'll re- reference our former president. And it's like our former president got it. And and I want to say allegedly for out of respect for people's ideologies, but allegedly got it. But guess what? He threw a whole bunch of money at it and he didn't change his ha- his health habits. He didn't change him till he got out of the White House. Like you just said, you know, he went, you know, you lose 50 pounds, whatever guys as healthy as he's ever been. You look at Joe Rogan's case, guys, a a, a machine, you know, guy kicks that heavy bag like 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 a horse. So people always don't look at the most basic things. You know, it's 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 funny when people ask like about diet or health or anything else. And I'm like, man, just go for a 10 minute walk after you eat, you know, (laughs) just a 10 minute walk every day after you eat. Oh, I can't do that. You don't have 10 minutes to go for a walk. You could scroll, you could scroll through Instagram and do that 10 minute walk. Really? I know. I know. <laughs> um, if I call you a year from now and I ask you, Hey, Danny, where's the business at? What do you hope to respond with? Full time. I'm, nice. I'm doing coaching full time. Awesome. Last, last one. We always do, uh, something to add an additional bit of value, reach one, teach one. Um, every question is framed differently for every guest. Um, you have to talk to a bunch of high school seniors at a school in Long Island and they want to get into sales. What's the first piece of actionable advice you'd give them if they want to embark on that journey? Go out and get a sales job right now. Go up, go, go walk into every uh, retail store in your neighborhood and go get a sales job right now. Nice. And you feel that it's more so because it'll help them. It'll, it'll, it'll humble them and teach them the nuances of sales, right? Absolutely. It, it's just like, it'll give, they'll, they'll start to understand customer service. They'll start to understand, um, you know, just how to posi- positioning and how to position your product and things like that. Um, yeah, I would just go into your local retail store, go to Best Buy. I mean, I don't have Radio Shack anymore, but go and get a, even if it's not a sales job, get a go- job as a greeter or something like that and work your way up to a sales rep. But um, go, go try it out. Or, I mean, you really want to go crazy? Go. I mean, go. Cre- cre- start a business. <laughs> there you go. You want to do it? You want to do it? You want to do it? Start a business. There you go. I mean, there's fertile ground to do it, man. I mean, I tell people all the time, like, you can't tell me that you can't make money now. It's insane. You know, you could go garage sailing. You could go Amazon FBA. You could go eBay. You could go uh you know starting an etsy store 3d printing crocheting i mean way more outlets than we had growing up way more yeah i i mean i think the other thing is like just to, you know you know for the um for the for the retail sales rep just like to build up some like resilience too mm-hmm. you know um like get to like be able to handle that rejection and things like that or you know get a job you know do, be a, to, to do cold calling go go get a job call, cold calling for somebody <laughs> Get your, get, get in touch with your Jordan Belfort. <laughs> get in touch well, with your Wolf I mean, of Wall look, Street. You'll, you'll learn how to handle rejection real fast. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Uh, last but not least, of course, where can people 
catch up with you, follow you, and keep up with all your work? Okay, so Instagram is my hub. You can find me. I'm at Coach D Sales, and my website is launching. It's launched. I mean, it's you can go out there and visit it right now. There's not much on there. Um, but the work, the networking group will be actually, by the time this comes out, my website's going to be good. To go. So, um, go visit my website, um, which is coachdannyd.com. and links for everything. And if you want to join the networking group for creators, whether you're a podcaster, you're creating content on Instagram, whatever platform you're creating content on, you want to connect with other creators, come join our, uh, creators networking group, uh, which is on, on my website as well. Awesome. Links for everything that we've discussed will be in the show notes for this episode. Danny, awesome, thank you so much for sharing the toys and tech of your trade, plus sharing a lot of actionable information for our listeners. I truly, truly appreciate you. Oh, man, I appreciate you. This was a fun time, and I ho- hope uh, you know to maybe come back again sometime for sure. I'm so glad I got to sit down and chop it up with Coach Danny. Uh, more importantly, I also got to visit his neck of the woods and do an Instagram live with him, which I believe you can still find on his Instagram at coach D sales. But if you want to connect with coach Danny, we'll make sure to include the link to his various social media accounts and his website in the show notes for this episode. We're also going to include links to everything we discussed as always full disclosure. Some of those items may contain affiliate links, which if you click, we will receive a small commission. Of course, that will not impact the price that you pay for whatever item or services referenced, but it is something that we always want to be transparent about. And all the commissions that we receive go towards giving you a better experience, whether it's on the podcast, on our website, or wherever else you consume RageWorks content. Last but not least, a couple of calls to action. I'd appreciate if you you can uh, share the podcast with your friends or people that are into this sort of thing. We would really, really appreciate it. We're moving away from asking people for reviews because, again, it's one of those things where if you like it, you know what to do. And um, most platforms are going to have a review feature. So you're going to use it or you're not. But I will say this. If you want to connect with us on social media, you can find RageWorks everywhere uh just punch in RageWorks, and you'll be able to pull us up whether it's twitter instagram facebook etc hell we're even on pinterest last but not least if you'd like to be a guest on a future episode of toys and tech of the trade you can email me rich at rageworks.net or you can head to the website uh, rageworks.net or rageworksnetwork.com and fill out the contact form include a little bit of information about yourself uh, what you want to discuss on the podcast and we'll be in touch and set something up. Lastly, if you are interested in having your podcast on the RageWorks podcast network, you can visit rageworksnetwork.com and reach out to us and we'll discuss and we'll see if it is a fit. I'm always looking for amazing shows to share with our audience. Whether your show is an established show and you want the support of a podcast network, or you just want a little bit more of a personal touch without all of the heavy lifting that's associated with launching a podcast, feel free to reach out via the site, or you can email me rich at rageworks.net to discuss. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this week's episode. We have some great guests on the horizon. We have more underdogs from Noah Kagan's underdogs group, plus much, much more. Also, I'll be doing a separate episode Uh, it's probably just going to be a solo episode talking about a networking group that I connected with here in the Long Island area. Thanks to coach Danny who put me on and man, I always thought that networking was sometimes a very transactional thing. And sometimes I loved it. Sometimes I hated it, but man, the folks over at the Long Island networkers group really not only made us feel welcome, but it wasn't some sort of salesy uh, you know, business card exchange extravaganza. It was intimate, inviting, and just a great experience overall. And I'm going to talk about that in a separate episode because maybe you may need to do something like that in your community if you want to help grow your business or podcast. So be on the lookout for that. And hopefully we'll have some of the other members of the Long Island Networkers group 
on future episodes of Toys and Tech of the Trade. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. We will see you guys in two weeks. Thanks for listening. Peace. Toys and Tech of the Trade is part of the RageWorks Podcast Network, your source for rants about gaming, entertainment, and the works. Visit us at RageWorksNetwork.com.